Very interesting saga. Tupac. Murdered 1996, all of a sudden there are, well, rumblings of a search warrant connected to his death. Let's put it up full mass. Authorities have searched a home in Las Vegas, Nevada as part of an ongoing investigation into the unsolved murder of Tupac Shakur. 25 year old artist was gunned down in a drive by shooting on September 7th, 1996. This was at the intersection of Flamingo Road and Covell Lane after tending a Mike Tyson fight. According to ABC 7 News, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department served a search warrant at a home in a city about 15 miles from Las Vegas. LVMPD can confirm a search warrant was served in Henderson, Nevada on July 17th, 2023 as part of the ongoing Tupac Shakur homicide investigation, read the statement. We will have no further comment at this time. The outlet also obtained video footage that shows individuals coming out of the home with their hands in the air after being ordered by police. However, no arrests have been made, no charges have been filed. Authorities were looking for laptops, computers, and articles about the rap legend's death. The current investigation and evidence are being presented to a grand jury and could lead to the discovery of the accomplice who was in the same car as the individual who fired the gun. The latter being presumed to be dead from another shooting two years after Tupac's death. There's more. The search warrant reportedly involves a Kefi D, a former gang member and the alleged uncle of the gunman, Orlando Anderson, according to a Los Angeles outlet Eight News Now. Over the years, he has discussed this openly. Uh, I think there's actually a book about it on various interviews and books such as 2019 work, Compton Street Legend. He contradicted himself and I wanna stop at this point. There's a video where he's literally asked about a quote in the book. And he says, that didn't happen. Mm. And then the person says, but it's, it's right here in your book and he reads it and he says, "Oh, now that leads me to believe he didn't really write the book. All right, and that has not been answered totally yet. Let me go back to the report. It says uh, no other information was provided by the authorities. But the news is a shock to many after the Dear Mama artist murder went unsolved for so many years. A lot of speculation as to who was involved. Shakur was riding in an SUV with Suge Knight when he was shot several times by an unknown assailant or multiple individuals. He died in the hospital six days later. Knight was also shot in the head, but survived and the crime was never solved. Social media users reacted to news about the search warrant and the latest update in the two decades long case. It took them 27 years to finally find the actual shooter. Really? Come on, bruh, wrote one fan. Yeah, this is only like 27 years late added another. If this was some random white woman, they would have solved it in one week, noted a third social media user. A fourth said, we already know who did it, so what's the point? Shakur's final final studio album, All Eyes On Me, spent two weeks on the Billboard Hot 100 in the number one spot. Since his death, the late rapper has released six additional albums and sold 33 million singles worldwide. And his on demand video and audio streams total more than 10 billion. Um, And I know some would say, well, All Eyes on Me was not his last album. It was his last album while he was living, okay? All right, Mm -hmm. this is a hell of a saga, hell of a story. You know, series have been done about this, movies, not great ones have been done about this. Um, A lot of conversation has been had about it. Now they're serving a warrant, but not saying anything to the public. What say you? I mean, look. I will never, uh, <laughs> look, if police are doing police work, good. That is uh, you know, probably another innocent unarmed black person who is not being harassed at this moment. Um, so I say, fine, I mean, you know, Dr. Richie, we live in this weird time where it takes documentaries and podcasts for you know cold cases to be reopened and in a lot of cases solved, right? You're like, why are these journalists doing the work of police? And again, when he was killed and in the moment he was killed and the East Coast, West Coast, you know, back 
battle uh, uh, that was happening and raging in that time allowed the media and sort of a white dominant media and police force to chalk it up to all gang violence. You know, and yeah. it was convenient for, for the narrative at the time. So look, if there's an accomplice in the car who, who is still alive, who can be found, absolutely we should know what was going on and who that person is. It is very convenient that the person who apparently did pull the trigger died also in an act of gang violence a couple years later. But so I think everyone, we need to get to the bottom of this case. And yeah, it's never too late for justice. And I'm sure his family feels the same way. Yeah, and I will say this for the record, um, the media has blood on their hands for both Tupac and Biggie. By creating an extreme narrative of brutal gang conflict, these individuals, they had beef. They used to be friends, at least they rocked with each other at one point. But the media made it so damn sensational mm -hmm. that it got everybody caught up in this East versus West. It takes Snoop Dogg to break it down properly. And then when disaster happened, Everybody looked to gang violence when a lot of the evidence pointed to police violence. Now I'm saying that for the record too. And how many officers in particular in the LAPD were members of gangs themselves. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll bring you updates as they come.